All right, all right, all right. Here we go again, back on to... Today we're gonna be looking through the lore book and the lore book settings and other things. Like mentioned in the last video, the lore book is much like memory in that it keeps relevant information you know from being culled off right you know because eventually your context limit is going to be reached you're going to be hitting the maximum amount of memory that you can pull and it's going to start you know forgetting some of this stuff as you fill in that context different sizes you know different plans but eventually you're going to need space even if you get the most okay so memory memory is more like static it's always going to be included while the lore book is variable in that it has keys that you can activate right now this one is set to always on as we did the last time we were here but usually always on is off right and then whenever always on is off it uses these keys to activate right so only if these keys are in like down here at the bottom if let's say mark or merc till is at the bottom then it'll read that and it'll be like it will you know no i spelt it wrong right here that's mercal that is why it's not activated on this one right here but if you put it in right should then open this up whenever you click it like that and it should actually show up in the context whenever we check it there you go as you can see it is now on top that is because we have changed a few things around but we're going to get into that in a second let's reset this to default just so that we can get a good view of what exactly it's going to look like if you just start you know putting things in right so it's just going to show up directly in front of your memory here and a lot of people i mean i'm going to be honest right like i said last time the format and the way you go about you know setting it up is up to you some ways work some ways work better some ways work you know worse and there are multiple different ways to get it to do what you want using it in its most basic form it probably will work to some degree you know but there are like tested and tried or more proven ways to do it even the style that i have used here is attribute style something from plumes guide which is down in the description below right so if you don't know about this or how to set up something like this for your characters go ahead read that guide it's beautiful it should be in the lore book section there's like four or five sections the lore book section which is basically what we're going to be going over today anyway it'll also talk about the separator here that we have up top just like the the uh prose separators or like text separators like the three asterisks right here see how we use it to change from a scene on like mars here to the scene where it's like on earth right and that just helps it with a, a scene change right just to make sure that it's like okay we're gonna not be on mars anymore we're gonna be on earth and this, this can be used for a lot of different things, chapters, scene changes, location changes, you know, any of those type of things is where you're going to want to put like a separator. But there is another type of separator, a info separator somewhat, and that will be the three dashes right, that we had up here. Three dashes, I mean four dashes actually, it's three asterisks but four dashes four dashes are used to indicate information and these are usually put up at the top above like before you start writing your story because really these are these are like story 
story breaks, right? And these indicate text more so. This is like, it also indicates story, like the start of a story as well. So you, you can use these to go from info to story. So you say, just to give a little, little example, let's say we had some info up here. Info, you know, put your little character here. Then you wanted to write a story about with said character in there, right? So you'd info, then put your character in, and then you'd have your, your story. And this is basically what we've done with, or what we are going to do with Mark. Right, Mark is our little character that we have going here. Mark the alien from Mars, or actually Mark the detective. Merktil, the alien from Mars, playing as Mark the dead detective, is what we're going to set up now. As you can see right now, though, where it shows up is not where we want it. The separator here is just, it's like text and then info separator and then it goes on to no separation between text and like informative prose you know what i mean basically you want this thing to be segmented correctly and sort of so that it won't interfere with things you know what i mean then you're going to want to move that up and there's a few ways you can do this I, like, if you just want it to be done quickly, you can just change the insertion order and the insertion position to one, right? And let's see if that worked. I'm pretty sure that's it. If not, I'll go back and I'll fix it. Yeah, there you go. Now it's on top and it should be, you know, this should be more akin to what Another great way to do this, the fine people over at Reddit and Discord have made plenty of, uh, like, organizers for your lore books that have been set in a format. So, I'm going to go over the one that I use most of the time. Maybe I'll figure out a way to put it in the description. If not, it's going to be Discord SG Green Pillars. You can find it there. It's a great little organizer that'll get you basically set up as good as you want. And then from there, you can just either disable what you don't want or, you know, use it as well as you want. Okay. Let's get that going. Now then. My SG green pillars is probably going to be different than the basic one. I think I've added down here the style guide as well, just because I liked some of those features. These are just like phrase biases, but you don't have to worry about that. Right now, that's that's beyond the lore book stuff right here. This is most likely what you'll be getting. Shelves for most of the things that you would want, you know. Locations, items, glossary factions. It goes over it a little bit in some of these upper ones. The orders, the numbers that they're placed in. Basically, these are like the, the placement numbers. I'm pretty sure the insertion order numbers. So that it's all arranged pretty well. But if you don't understand exactly what you're looking at, don't forget to check context up here. Okay, you can literally just check... Like you can put a few words like if we put if we open a character heat right and we go uh, you know something like that we turn it on so that we can see it you can see where it'll place it right there right basically this has just about everything that you need already formatted into it already so that you can just sort of plop this in and have a good time i'm going to disable this so that we can get just the barest bones of what we want out of the lore book right now and this thing already has a 
position for memory. So if we wanted to, if we wanted to do it in this style, this style is, I'm pretty sure, just from Plume's Guide and a few other sources. Like it's, uh, it's a tr pretty trusted style. And then we grab the ATTG because it already has a spot for the ATTG as well. You'll notice that this right here, important thing to look out for, the commenting out symbols here. So basically, even though this is always on, you notice we didn't see this be there because of this. This makes it a comment, which means it won't show up in the context. Once we remove that, this, this will now show up. Let me just show you before I input our new thing. There you go, just a blank, empty thingy move up. We're gonna change that into what we had before. And you'll start to notice a wee bit of difference is coming on here, you know what I mean? A wee bit of difference. Now then, we haven't destroyed our mark thing yet, but if we instead put this as mark, and then we do that. Bada bing, bada boom. We should have a pretty properly formatted one. Some people say ATTG should be at the top. That is what this format is based off of. And that is probably, well, remember before we had lore book memory was at the top with ATT, ATTG on top. So basically having ATTG at the top is probably one of the better places for it. And that is why this is here at the top. You notice we have like a random, we accidentally left that whenever we copied it. And we actually have this here, the whole thing. But let's make sure that didn't bleed into our ear. That was still showing up. Basically, all we're doing is cleaning it up, cleaning up the format, and there we go. ATTG on the very top. Info marker for your characters. And I mean, as you can see, we didn't put that line there. That line is not here. This, the shelves that are here are already set up to prefix that little line for you and that's why this is so useful it comes with so many different things already put in place that you don't have to worry about it you know what i mean you don't have to worry about the positions of them anymore as long as you have them here and follow like any guide on what should go in them then they will probably work as good as possible if it doesn't work for you remember that none of this is gospel okay you can change it up you can swap it off to your will there is a a dinkus a dinkus just there which is what they call the three the three um asterisks that separate between the story and the lore book and there is one between here and now you can sort of see the flow though is what we're trying to get at. If we had if we had like another thing in lore book, it would look probably even easier. Let's just say something like that. Yeah, let's turn that always on. And basically it's going to do that for everything that it is right and that's why i recommend sg green pillars it's going to format it for you so you don't have to think about it it's going to it's going to have a position for your author's note and your and your attg so well not your author's note right it doesn't have one for author's note author's note is weird and where that it places it we saw a little bit of that whenever we were working on it the first time but basically there's a lot you can do 
with the lore book. It is a reminder of things. Remember that we have turned these always on, but typically these are going to be only triggered by these words. You can also have them trigger in things like your memory if you want them to like stay on all the time whenever they're whenever you're on this story right or like whenever you put it stuff in memory there's tons of stuff that you can do with it to get in your story started off but i think that is a quick enough overview to get you going and get you started i wouldn't recommend doing um just what we did here with the elves and stuff i would recommend putting some some thought in there there are i think two styles on the plume guide the attribute and i think what is it called it's called like um and i believe snippets uh so you can do either of those two there is also a way that um like uh the official novel ai documentation does it i think it's more so just a basic you know just put the stuff in see how it does this has a lot of information i would really recommend you go over these as well especially if you want to know more about the inner workings and buttons if you do have any questions though drop them down below and hopefully this will help you set up your next lore book with all of these shelves i'm sure you can find something that you're looking for and hopefully keep everything else in order